Hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pens. Today I have for you three fountain pens from my collection and the common element that links them together is the beautiful material of the body which was very popular in the 1920s. Of course we are talking about the beautiful, beautiful Ebonite. I have three, here three fountain pens from my collection. The difference between them is in the pattern of the material. And as you see, this has those ripple effects. And this is the so-called muttled ebonite, mottled red ebonite. You can see the beautiful ripple effect. In fact, this is the Waterman Ideal number seven, which was, saw the first light of day in 1927, and it was produced in America during the 1930s. The rest of them, the so-called mottled material. One of them is uh, made in Italy, also in the late 1920s. It is the RR3 model, and you can see at the end of the barrel engraved RR3. And the last of the fountain pens is quite a mysterious fountain pen because uh, judging by it, it is um, the hard rubber pattern is clearly not American. So I presume it was European made. The lever filler is copied after the wall ever sharp models, but it's slightly longer and the clip is specific to the French market. But this particular fountain pen has an interesting, interesting nib, and I will show it to you. Yes, it has a warranted 14 karat first quality nib number three. So quite small for this body of the fountain pen. I presume that it had a number four or a number six nib originally. So this could be a replacement nib or it could be the original nib, but intended for markets like Belgium or Switzerland, because you know, the French market demanded 18 karat fitted fountain pens 18 karat nibs fitted on fountain pens. Guys, as you probably have noticed, all of them are lever fillers. A quite popular, quite popular filling system during the 1920s and well into the 1930s. What is nice about this material? In uh, my opinion, it's certainly more robust than the celluloid. And in the hand, they feel quite, quite nice. And I think that uh, they hold the body heat of your hands and they are quite, quite light. I like this material. Some of the collectors consider this quite boring, but you got to love those patterns. Just look at them. Wonderful, wonderful patterns. And now guys, I will show you their nibs. Unfortunately, I believe none of those fountain pens are fitted with their original nib. And I've shown you this French model fitted with a nib, warranted nib. When you see the warranted nib, it means it's a nib made uh, in the US or the UK. 
The next one, the Waterman fountain pen is fitted with the ideal nib, a Waterman ideal nib, but unfortunate. You can see it is a number four nib and the breathing hole, it is in a form of a heart and not a keyhole. Usually the Watermans from that period, the Watermans number seven were fitted with a nib that had a breathing hole in the shape of a nib. And the last one, the Italian fountain pen is fitted with a replacement nib, an Italian nib made by the famous producer Omas. It is a gold-plated nib, but unfortunately only a steel nib, EF. If we look at the ebonite, we can see that the Italian model and the American model had a quite simple ebonite feed, but the feed from the French model has the, those little, little tiny feeds and it is quite, quite nice. I believe that all are made from the same material ebonite. Interesting about them is the concave ending. It is uh, most visible on the Italian model, a slight concave at the American model, and uh, on the French model we have also a concave ending specific to the designs of those times. I love, I simply love the holes, the breathing holes of the nib in the shape of a heart. Guys, I will also do a written sample with uh, those beautiful, beautiful nibs. Of course, they all perform differently. Unfortunately, as I told you before, I don't think that those are the original nibs that were fitted from factory for uh, this particular set of fountain pens. But before I will leave the dimensions, let me compare them with, uh, let's say, a much more younger fountain pen from the 1980s. And I a quite popular fountain pen and I have on my desk the famous Mont Blanc Le Grand 146. So let me place it here among the water one. Next I will put the French made fountain pen and the small small Aurora Ara Free. Aurora a rimpiamento automatico. So guys, you can see them. You can see how large the Waterman Red Ripple fountain pen is. The other mottled models are smaller than the Mont Blanc 146. Also, I will leave the dimensions of the fountain pens on the screen. And why not? I will leave also the dimensions of the Mont Blanc 146 just for a size reference. For the moment, I will leave out of the picture the Mont Blanc and I will put aside the other models. For the writing sample, Guys, you must know that uh, not all of the, the filling systems are functional, so I will simply dip the nibs in ink, and for the ink, I thought to myself, I would use the Faber-Castell pink ink, erasable. You'll notice that I wrote here dark, yes, this pink ink is, uh, let's say, contaminated with a few drops of darker Ink, I believe it is combined with a few drops of Parker Quick Ink. Okay, now I will open the bottle. I will give it a little shake. I will take the tissue and let me start writing. I will take the tissue, okay.
I will open the bottle, but before I will start the actual writing sample, I will change the angle of the camera for you to see better the written sample. Okay, guys, so this is the paper. This is the name, the, the ink. And let me start with the smaller one, the Aurora Ara 3, Aurora Arimpiamento Automatico, a fountain pen made in Italy from the late 1920s. It is made out of this gorgeous, gorgeous black flamed ebonite. Let me show you first some details. Yes, Fabrica Italiana di Penne a Serbatoio. Okay, this beautiful level filler. Unfortunate, equipped with a replacement nib, but also an Italian made nib, this time by the OMAS manufacturer, a EF nib, a steel nib, gold plated. So, Guys, let me zoom out because I want to show you how I dip the pen in ink. I will try to dip only the nib and the ebonite feed. Okay, first of all, of all guys, let me zoom on it. Okay, so this is an Aurora. model ARA 3 and this means Aurora A Riempimento Automatico Automatico I'm sorry guys, let me give you some zoom. Yes, Aurora 3, Aurora Arimpiamento Automatico. Fitted with a steel nib, steel nib, made by Omas. A gold plated steel nib, gold plated. And a EF. This means we have an extra fine, extra fine nib. In my opinion, it writes like an F or a medium nib, but it is engraved extra fine. Okay, guys, let me see if we have some line variation. And you can see no line variation. Let me show you how juicy. It is quite, quite a juicy one. Now let me test the pressure. So no pressure here. And now let's start with some pressure. Definitely no line variation. Okay, guys, let me see how fine we can do a signature with it. Yes, quite nice. Okay, guys, now let's see if I can reverse write with it, reverse writing, and yes, I think it's a possibility, definitely no scratches and no loss in the ink flow, and now let me tell you about the fox, and I will try to, to write let me see, yes, here. So, the quick brown fox, yes, jumps over the lazy dog. So quite, quite a nice writer. I know it's not its original name, 
but I think it is a well well replacement nib. I hope some days I will get my hands on the original Aurora nib. I will leave this aside. Now let me see the French model. No imprints, no identification on it. The, just this interesting design clip. Some uh, two metallic rings and this is all. This is all. Of course, a very similar material to the Italian material. So maybe this is French or of Italian origin. Fitted with a beautiful, beautiful nib, a warranted nib. Let me see. So I will dip it in ink and let me see if I can write with it. I will call it, uh, sorry guys, I will call it the no name French pen. Of course, it uh, loses the ink flow, so maybe now it will be better. It is fitted with a gold nib, a gold nib, a warranted first quality nib, if I'm not mistaken, a number three nib. Judging by the way it writes, I think it is a f, f from a fine nib. Let me do also the test. So yes, no flex. You can see that the shade of pink, it is uh, like a purple, a dark purple one. This means uh, the nib had residues of darker ink. So no flex to it. Let me see how juicy it is. And it appears to be quite juicy, especially when I just dip it in ink. Now the pressure. Here no pressure and here pressure. So no line variance. Let me do a signature with it. Yes, beautiful in signature. And the re reverse, reverse writing. This time it is a no on reverse writing because it scratches and you can see here it lost its ink flow. Now let me tell you about the fox. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I can tell you it is a smooth, smooth writer. An interesting, interesting, mysterious fountain pen with no imprints of the manufacturer. And now, guys, Last, but definitely, definitely not in the last place, is this beautiful, beautiful Waterman. Ideal number seven, red ripple. Beautiful, beautiful fountain pen fitted with a gold nib. Gold nib. An ideal nib. Number four, but not the original nib of this fountain pen. Again, the fountain pen is identified by this band. It should be a black. I'm sorry. Guys, too much ink. Yes, it should be a black, black belt. But some friends on Facebook suggested to me 
that this could be green or brown and it developed this black color in time and the reason is uh, they did this line in a material called casein and you know that casein is quite a delicate delicate material that definitely changes its colors in time okay guys so a black ideal nib a gold nib now i'm ready to see if we have some line variance and as you can see yes we have yes we have now let me see the juiciness it appears to be quite quite juicy yes the line variation no very no line and this no no line variation let me see how it does a signature so review quite quite nice and now let me see if we can reverse reverse writing I must say yes definitely a possibility it you can see it has almost the same consistency as the original side of the nib and it doesn't scratch now let me tell you the last about the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so guys a wonderful wonderful writer from uh, all of those i i think this is my favorite it, it has a little bit of flex it has a little bit of juice to it and it is wonderful 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 if you've enjoyed this comparison between the three ebonite phantom pens from my collection you should get in touch with me subscribe to my channel and i will try to deliver to you new content each and every day bye bye and god bless